In this video, I'll be going over the basics of a therapeutic decompressive technique often referred to as cupping. So if you wanna learn the basics of different types of cups and how to use them, then stick around and watch this video. Hey everyone, welcome to another video. All right, so today we are going over the basics of the therapeutic treatment modality known as cupping. Now, I wanna be very mindful of your time here, so I've got timestamps in the description below if you need to just jump to a particular section of this video. All right, so with cupping, what the heck is it and why are we even considering using it in the first place? Well, you're gonna get a very quick and brief basic rundown here, but hopefully it's just gonna kinda of paint a nice overall picture for you. So there are a lot of different ways that we can treat what we call soft tissues, kind of the muscles and those associated tissues within the body. Now, oftentimes we wind up doing it through compressive hands-on techniques in order to foster healthier changes to those tissues and kind of settle them down and decrease pain. And that's really good, but when it comes to cupping, cupping can be really unique in that it's the only way that we have to kind of treat and target some of these similar types of tissues through actually decompressing those tissues rather than compressing them. Now, this decompression works by creating a vacuum effect over the area that we've placed the cup, and that decompressive effect in turn just does a couple of different things. So with that vacuum effect, we are working to try and separate different layers of tissue underneath the skin. And in doing so, a couple of different things are going to happen. So one of the first things that's gonna happen here is that we're kind of lifting layers of tissue apart and that's improving the ability for fluid to kind of move between those tissues. Now, the second thing that's gonna happen here, at least theoretically, is that by kind of creating that vacuum effect and drawing more blood into the area underneath the cup, well, those tissues that we're targeting now have a much more oxygen rich and blood filled environment to hopefully kind of heal up, decrease some of that irritation that's causing some of that pain and discomfort and providing a better environment for tissues to kind of become more mobile and more supple and even maybe increase a little bit of their rate of recovery. Now, one other really cool way that clinicians such as myself and other individuals will use these cups is actually for something really cool called improving sensory motor awareness. Now that is far beyond the scope of this video, but just to let you know what it's about, it's a really cool way in which we can help kind of tap into an individual's ability to better perceive and feel movement that they're generating within an area of their body. So when we lack sensory motor awareness in an area of the body, or we have a kind of low sensory motor awareness, it's hard to feel how we're producing and coordinating our movement. And so if our movement is off, well, that can be generating some pain and discomfort. So by placing these little cups on the skin, we're again giving better feedback to the movement that's happening for that individual. Their brain can pick up on it better and we can help to kind of foster a better way to help retrain their movement. Now that's just a little side note, but it is a really cool way in which we can help other individuals move better and kind of retrain their movement and get out of pain. So just to let you know, that's another reason why we will use these cups. Now, if you are someone who is very research driven, just to let you know that the actual amount of research on these cups in terms of the theories and ways in which they work and how effective they may actually be with a lot of these different types of conditions, well, the research isn't super great, so I want to acknowledge that, but there is also something to be said, not only for the anecdotal evidence that a lot of people mention, but also just for the fact that it is a very simple and straightforward way that people can use this treatment technique on themselves to help maybe feel a little bit better. Now, as we dive into the basics of different types of cups and how to use them, just keep in mind that not every type of treatment modality such as cups is appropriate for every individual. And there's plenty of times in which these types of treatment techniques might not be ideal for someone. And while it's far beyond the, the scope of this video for me to mention all of those potential scenarios, just make sure that if you're going to use this on yourself that it's appropriate to do so. All right, with all that blabbering out of the way, let's talk about the different types of cups there are and how you can wind up using them. So there's really three different types of cups that can be used that you'll often see individuals using. Now, the first one is the very traditional method that involves kind of glass bulbs or glass cups. And this is often referred to of a technique known as fire cupping. So this works by essentially sucking all the oxygen out of the cup using a little um, flame and then putting it on the skin. And then you can again kind of glide the cup around that way. And I'll talk about those gliding techniques in a second. Now, the second common type of cup that you may see is actually kind of one where it's a plastic shell cup put on the skin. And then there's actual kind of pump gun that hooks up to that cup to suck out the air within the area and create a really high amount of specific pressure. 
Now those can be great for a number of different reasons and techniques, but the one limitation with those is that again, you can't do what we call a dynamic technique with those, at least not that well. And I'll talk about these different types of techniques in a second. Now, this leads us to the third type of cup that you will commonly see. And these ones happen to be my favorite. And so these cups are just ones that are silicone based. So I like them because they are very versatile, they're very inexpensive, and you can do different types of treatment techniques with them. So with different types, there's the very common silicone based standard one, just like this. And again, these come in very uh, different types of sizes and you can use these different sizes for different body parts that you're treating because you'll find that some areas of the body will need smaller cups based on the contours of the skin, whereas other areas such as the side of the leg yield themselves really well to more of the larger cups. And the larger the cup is, the more pressure that it kind of creates in terms of that vacuum effect. So these types of silicone cups, really, really good for a lot of different reasons. The other type of silicone cup I like are these ones here, and these are uh, known as Rock Pods, made by the company Rock Tape. Now, there's probably other brands out there that make these, and I will say that I haven't used them. I've just used these Rock Pods from day one, and I've always loved them, so I have no reason really to go to anything else. Worth quickly mentioning too that Rock Tape has come out with larger versions of these now. I don't have them at this point in time, but I do want to get my hands on them because while these ones are super awesome, I find that if I had some larger styled rock pods for treating certain areas of the body, I'd just be a little bit better off. Now, make no mistake about it, these types of rock pods are incredibly high powered for what you can do with them in terms of the suction you can create. And we'll cover just kind of the different ways you can modulate that power in just a second. But these silicone cups are the ones that I tend to use when I'm either working on myself or when I'm treating my patients. Now again, one more benefit of these types of silicone cups is they're very durable and robust. So you can wind up just kind of quickly tossing them in a bag somewhere. You don't have to worry about them uh, breaking easily or having other kind of components to hook up to. And they're very easy to clean too, right? Again, you just kind of run some soapy water underneath them. And again, they clean up very nicely, which is great if you're using them on other individuals such as patients you may be treating or if you're just using them uh, on yourself a lot, it's nice to always make sure that they're clean. They clean quite easily, and that's another kind of bonus about them. Now, when it comes to using these silicone cups, there's a lot of different treatment techniques in which we can use in order to try and achieve some of the benefits that we're going for. Now, those treatment techniques that I'm gonna cover here, you can use them with some of the other types of cups as well, but the silicone ones I just find seem to work the best for what I tend to use them for. So when it comes to using the cups, there's two different types of cupping that you can often do. So one is called a dry cupping and the other is called a wet cupping. Now a dry cupping just refers to the cup going onto the skin without any type of uh, lotion or what we often refer to as an emollient going on the skin. And so what that means is we're really just gonna kind of have that cup stick in place without really producing any movement over the area that we're trying to treat. Now in this video here, I'm demonstrating on my arm, but this can be applied to other parts of the body as well. Arms, shoulders, back, legs, you get the idea. So a traditional dry cupping technique is often referred to as a static technique. So static just meaning that there's no movement. Now rock pods work really good for this because the way the rock pods work is that you can just basically put them right on the skin and then you can either just let things sit or you can do another type of treatment technique thereafter, which I'll get into in a second. So with the rock pod, you have two different ways that you can actually create the suction gradient. So there's this little kind of plunger piece right here and you can actually push that plunger down and then once it's on the skin, just release it and you'll have a mild type of vacuum force. Now, the other way you can do it is you can actually flip the cup or pod inside out and then put it on the skin and then flip it back and that will create a very high amount of vacuum effect underneath the area. So as a result, if I was going to treat my arm here, I can just come here and just plunge her right on down. And then from there, the cup's on there pretty good. Now, I can just essentially let that cup sit there. And again, if this was on my shoulder or anywhere else, I could just kind of get that therapeutic effect going that way. Now, I like this technique but I'll show some other ones in a second. And I often find that if I need a little bit more power, I'll flip the cup inside out. And now with it flipped inside out, I'm gonna put it right on. And now it is really on there. So that thing has got some seriously high power suction. So I can just let it sit with a dry cupping technique like this, or I can also choose to do something called an active glide. 
Now an active glide works by having the cup in a static position, but then producing movement in a way that in this case, the forearm flexors that are kind of running right underneath the cup there are having to produce movement while there's actually that kind of suction or negative pressure gradient underneath the cup. And you will feel that the tissues can have to move and respond differently with that suction going on. And so theoretically here, this is a great way to mobilize some of the tissues and again, get some of that therapeutic benefit going. So that is an active gliding technique. And again, you can always use more than just one cup in an area. It all depends on kind of really what you're after. So again, I got more kind of tendinous tissue in this part, again, same deal, I got two on there now. That is a lot of suction power and I can certainly feel the effects of kind of that negative pressure gradient. It's very hard to kind of almost pull my forearm back that way, that's a big stretch. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those cups off. Now those rock pods work great for that type of technique. And again, patients often really find that it feels very therapeutic. These types of silicone cups, they don't lend themselves as well to this kind of static technique where you're just doing a dry cupping with some active movements. It works, but the suction's oftentimes not quite as strong. That's actually pretty strong in this case. But for this type of technique, I'm going with the rock pods, but we gotta talk about wet cupping and we have to also talk about a, another type of gliding technique called a passive glide with wet cupping. And these silicone cups are actually gonna work better for that. So when it comes to the wet cupping technique, that just refers to putting lotion on the skin, kind of creating a little bit more of a kind of good barrier for the suction to take a place, and then kind of being able to glide and move the cup around the tissue that way. So what I tend to like to use is just basically uh, something simple like Lubriderm. So Lubriderm works really, really good. So what I'll do here is I'm just gonna put a little bit of that on my fingers. And then again, just kind of using the form as a demonstration, I'll just put a little bit of that on through there. And then if I were to take, let's try a medium sized cup here, I'm gonna put that on and now I've got a pretty good suction effect and I could do that active gliding technique with the static approach. But the other way I can do it now is I can actually kind of glide that cup around. And as I do this without producing movement, this is called a passive glide. And the passive glide often feels very really therapeutic. I use this on my patients a lot in the clinic. And then from there, once I feel that I've had enough, I can just kind of squeeze the cup, break the seal, and then we're good to go. Now, for these passive glides where it's kind of this dynamic gliding technique, the rock pods actually don't work that well, so I really only use these for a static type of dry cupping. I could, with that emollient on, put it right on the forearm as well. And again, I've still got a really good seal and kind of do my gliding that way. But if we're using that kind of dynamic gliding technique, which I often like, I'm gonna be using these silicone cups. And you can see now what's happening is that we're kind of getting this kind of pink skin and that's what we're looking for. We're just getting more blood flow into the area. And it's important to know that as I'm kind of cupping around, I oftentimes kind of produce a gentle pull outward. So I'm kind of lifting the skin even more. Let's see if you can see that on the top camera there. You can really kind of see that skin moving out. That's a really, really good sign that we're getting some decompression going. Now, as I do this, I like moving the cup around so that I just don't build up one big purple welt in the area. So you see these kind of purple welts on people, oftentimes on their shoulders and back. There's nothing harmful and dangerous about that. But again, a lot of times that's just not something that people wanna have on their skin. It takes a few days or a week or so to go away. So by doing the dynamic gliding technique, what's happening is we're avoiding that buildup of kind of blood pooling in the area and kind of getting this uh, different type of uh, coloration on the skin. It's called petechiae. It just refers to kind of breaking a bunch of whole kind of tiny little vessels known as capillaries in the skin. Again, nothing harmful about it, but just something that I tend to stay away from in terms of excessive amounts. So you can see just after doing that for a few seconds, nice little kind of pink area building up on the skin. I'm just gonna put a little bit more of that lotion on and just do a little bit more as we kind of go through this. And this feels quite nice. I oftentimes have a lot of tension running through here. So it's important to know that when you're doing this, this isn't necessarily going to be any type of cure, but rather we just call a treatment adjunct. So an adjunct just meaning something that you're using to supplement another type of technique. And it's important to know that if you're a clinician, if you are a um, aspiring physical therapist or you're a physical therapy student, getting really good at subclassifying pain is really important so that you know whether this is even going to produce any type of benefit on an individual that you're treating. Because a lot of times this might be something that actually kind of makes them a bit worse off and we certainly don't want that. 
So there we go, just kind of putting that cup on, just moving around. Again, for the video, all demonstrated on the forearm, but oftentimes you can do this on the side of the leg and just on the calves or back of shoulders, wherever you can target on yourself, or you can have someone kind of move the cups around on your back. You can even kind of go up onto the neck with the smaller cups. Really just have to kind of get comfortable knowing what's best for you. Now, one other treatment technique that works really good with this is to be able to kind of almost kind of twist the skin as you're kind of moving the cup around. And so that twisting, again, winds up kind of producing a shearing force, which can help kind of with different types of fascial restrictions. So fascia, it's kind of like this saran wrap uh, covering that wraps around different muscles. And by kind of producing that little shearing force, you can actually help to kind of free up what we call some fascial restrictions. Now I'll demonstrate that with a rock pod here, probably a little bit better. So we'll just put that on there, come up there. And then you can see that kind of twisting effect happening with the skin. And what that's doing, again, that twisting is creating all those different types of shearing effects. And with that, we're theoretically getting a little bit better movement um, restored into the area that we're treating. So that's really it for the video. That's just a basic rundown of how therapeutic cupping can be used. And again, a lot of the ways in which we'll use it. Now, obviously I can't cover everything within one quick little video. So if you have any questions or comments about what you saw in this video, feel free to leave them in the comment box below and I'll do my best to respond in a timely manner. Now, thanks for sticking around to this part of the video. Now, if you haven't met me already, my name is Jim and I'm a physical therapist. And on this channel, I'm putting out content that is based around helping others to move better, to feel better, to live more physically active and meaningful lives, as well as I produce a lot of content to help physical therapy students get through school and become exemplary practitioners. Now, if that sounds cool to you in any sort of way, feel free to hit the like and subscribe button. And if you found this video helpful and informative in any way, just a simple like would go a long way. So that's it for the video. Everyone keep looking after one another, keep looking after yourselves, keep making great things happen, and I will see you in the next video.